Welcome back to Seek Strength and welcome back to Seekistan. My name is Owen. I'm approximately 54% of the biomass here at Seek Strength and I am a weightlifting coach. We've been coaching lifters for a very long time and we've coached a lot of lifters over the years. And what I want to do with this video series, if you haven't tuned in already, is to help you figure out a couple of things from some great big and small lifters that you can implement in your own training and some ways that you can address that in your training. And usually with these videos, we pick two different things that you're going to work on. And today we're looking at Clarence Kennedy's clean. Now, Clarence needs no introduction. He is a 195 kilo snatcher, 227 and a half kilo clean and jerker. I think he's clean like 232 kilos at about 100 kilos. So I guess you could say he's a he's not a bad lifter, all things considered. So we're looking at Clarence's clean. And in my opinion, Clarence's clean is probably his best of those three lifts, the snatch, the jerk, and the clean in terms of technical attributes. While obviously the other two lifts are very, very impressive, there's something about his clean that is excellent, and there's a lot of great things we can look at. But today we're going to look at two different things. The first thing we're going to look at makes sense for Clarence, and that is the speed when he passes his knee up until contact and turning the barbell over. This is a huge problem for a lot of lifters when it comes to the average lifter, the intermediate lifter, is changing the speed of the barbell from the first to the second pull. And then we have a smaller segment of that, which is from the second pull beginning to the contact point and speeding through the contact point. So the barbell will slow down at contact. I don't really like the phrase contact, but it is a phrase that is used a lot and it's colloquially understood. I prefer the explosive phase, but it sounds a little bit weird saying the explosive phase. But when I say contact point, I don't really want you to worry about contact. What I want you to focus on is speeding up through the contact. Now, let's look at a couple of Clarence's cleans. There's a few here. Uh, these are 220 kilos, and I really want you to watch these because these are exceptional. So watch from the barbell goes above the knee, past that point. See how fast the barbell goes? Now, in the clean, the barbell needs to be moving pretty fast off the floor anyway because the weights are heavier, the distance the barbell travels is going to be shorter compared to the snatch. And so, because they're heavier and the lift is a shorter distance, we need that barbell moving quickly, but not so quickly that we can't move the second pull faster. So watch the second clean here again at 220 kilos. Really pay attention. Once it passes the knees, I want you to see how fast it hits, how fast the speed of the barbell goes. He absolutely hits warp speed, turning that barbell over. Now, this is something that you will have to be really diligent with. This is something you'll have to work on. This won't happen naturally. Speed of the barbell is something that a lot of people get wrong. And when they ask us and they say, how do I get faster at weightlifting? Well, you try and get faster. You need good technique. You need strength available to you. You may need some sports-specific speed training, possibly. But the first place you need to start is moving faster if you've satisfied your technical parameters. So timing is very, very important in weightlifting, of course, but speed is something that does not happen by accident. When you're walking down the street, you don't suddenly start sprinting by accident. It's something that you would consciously put effort into. And in the same way at weightlifting, we need to focus on going faster by actively trying to be faster. And there's a good chance your lifts right now aren't half fast enough. If you can, go train with some very good lifters. I know it's hard, easier said than done, but if you get an opportunity, go watch them and then you'll see how fast they move their warm-up weights. So watch some series of cleans here. And you'll see how quickly that barbell moves from above the knee to contact. And as he's moving through contact, he's going really quickly. So this is straightforward, but it takes a lot of practice. And there's a couple of parameters that we need to deal with when we come to this particular th problem. Make sure we're obeying that. And we'll get to those in just a minute. So that's the first thing we need to be looking at here. Speed, speed, speed. Wait good positions, of course, but speed, speed, speed through that second pull. You can actually make up for a lot of poor positions in weightlifting if you're moving fast enough and if your body's moving fast enough. The second thing I want to look at here is, again, a speed element of the lift, but it really comes down to the speed under the barbell. So this is a second aspect of the clean that a lot of lifters get wrong. We see a lot of lifters over pulling the barbell. We'll see a lot of lifters focusing on a very long extension, really high pull. We'll see lifters focusing on pulling the barbell high and then squatting it down in the clean. That might be useful in the snatch, but in the clean, that is the opposite of what we want. Due to the nature of the clean being particularly heavy and much heavier than the snatch, hopefully it's heavier than the snatch, you can't waste time over pulling heavy cleans. 
The main thing you need to focus on for heavier cleans is speed through that second pull, of course, but you getting under the barbell faster. Now, timing does matter. Timing between you and the barbell matters, but this is something that actually sorts itself out quite well. If you get that second pull positions right and that second pull speed right and the contact speed right, and if you use some other aspects of the third pull that's important that we've touched on before, but a lot of that will sort itself out if you're really quick under the barbell. And once again, you have to focus on this. This is not something that will happen naturally. You have to work on getting under the barbell sooner. In theory, and it's a hallmark of masters level or masters or sport level weightlifters, the distance from the maximum height of the barbell to fixation point or the bottom of the squat clean is very small. And the distance from here to here gets smaller as the years go on. So I don't particularly want you to think about bar height and catch height. What I want you to focus on is faster through that second pull but also you getting underneath the barbell incredibly quickly. So getting down underneath the barbell. You may not be able to get under the barbell as fast as Clarence, but I want you to go faster than you have been doing right now. You want to be able to reduce this. You'll get better over time. Your timing will get better as you practice more lifts. Think of these things, improvements in increments of six months. Don't think, man, it's been two sessions and I'm still not faster and the clean doesn't feel better. I'm just gonna go back to my old way. You need to work on things for months and months and months on end until they're perfect. It takes a very long time to improve aspects of cleans and snatches and jerks because they're fast, they're heavy, they're explosive movements. Weightlifting is a very, very hard sport. So don't expect instant gratification from changes. And also don't expect these changes to feel particularly good when you do them. Sometimes they feel better and that's great. But we need to keep an objective mind when it comes to these and getting under the barbell faster in heavy cleans is so important. You'll massively increase your efficiency and then in theory, you'll increase your potential to how much you can clean and heavier weights and hopefully then you will be a better weightlifter because of that. So if we move on to the fixes or things we need to address or that are very, very useful that we can take from Clarence's training that can help us with those the first thing is posterior strength, and you'll probably notice the trend that we keep coming back to this posterior strength. We're actually working on a program at the moment, and I'm calling it the Anti-Glass Back. It's a program for people looking to improve their posterior strength as much as possible for the app. It's not so much about improving your 1RM, but it's just about building up the posterior hinging patterns in your back over the course of about 16 weeks to something akin to Wolverine's back or Clarence's back here. Anyway, one of the fixes that we can use from Clarence's training from our first problem, which is too slow during that second pull, is pulling strength and posterior strength. So if you think about this in simplistic terms, and it's not a bad idea, the stronger your pull is, as long as the positions and the joint angles are very, very similar, in fact, we need to keep them pretty much the exact same. If you can move a lot of weight, and if you can move it fast, you're going to give yourself a great opportunity to transfer that over to the clean. Now, you still need timing. You still need technique. You have to keep fatigue in check. You have to make sure that you're reproducing the positions on your clean deadlift or your clean pulls that are the same as your clean. And then you hopefully will get a transference over there. What we'll often see if lifters have very weak backs, if they have poor pulls, generally, if they're talented lifters, they'll still be able to get under the barbell and miss the bounce maybe. But if you have a strong back, very strong posterior, a strong hinging pattern, you will be able to maintain the positions during your second pull better. And you'll also be able to move the barbell faster because not to Mark Ripito this, because he's not wrong, <laughs> but he's also pretty wrong. But if we look at your capacity to pull a heavy weight, Clarence, for example, in one of these videos is dead of things, something like 340 kilos. And if we can move a clean deadlift with similar positions, maybe not 340 kilos, but maybe it's 180 kilos to 120 kilos, something like that. If you can move those positions without inf interfering with the rest of your training, if you can move those quickly with the same joint angles, remember that's really important, or very, very close to the same joint angles as your clean, you're giving yourself a good opportunity to move that barbell faster. And you're also getting extra repetitions with that barbell, of course. You're also giving yourself an opportunity to move the barbell faster, but also maintain those same positions and their load better. Because if you can maintain those positions that you want, which 200 kilos, you probably have a better chance of maintaining those positions with 120 kilos. Now, the second thing we need to look at, and let's actually look at this heavy deadlift because... I think this is 320, yeah, 330 kilos, 727 pounds. Let's just take a second to appreciate this. This is hook grip, clean deadlift positions. You'll see Clarence's shoulder move slightly in front of the barbell. His knees will move back. And this is why it's so useful. And we see such a big clean from him. Let's just uh, 
Let's take a second to appreciate this. Oh, unbelievable. Now, the second thing we need to look at here, and it's actually something we haven't massively touched on in the series yet. We haven't really talked about squatting strength. But the having a massive squat relative to your lifts can be really useful for both of our problems. So if we're looking at the speeding up through contact point, having stronger legs, hip extension, massively important knee extension coming from squatting as well, and getting under the barbell, both of these can be incredibly benefited by having a big squat. So here's Clarence Paul squatting 300 kilos. I think his best is 310, maybe 311. Paul squat, of course. And this helps massively with both of our problems. So in the same way that we will use high force training for athletes in their plyometric training when they're trying to improve their jumping ability, their running, with a similar sequence of events, high threshold motor units are trained very, very well by heavy high force movements in the right order, in the right time in your training. And so having a big squat is for good reasons associated incredibly well with weightlifting. So for here, we're really looking at squatting and deadlifting strength. Now, the good thing about squatting, if we're getting a good range of motion and we're staying quite upright and we're pushing our knees well over our toes and we're hitting a decently good quality high bar squat, you'll get a lot of the benefit out of that. Now, again, you don't need to be hugely in front of your weightlifting, but I don't really like the conversation on ratios. And we kind of think similarly about this, Darren and I, is that ratios are nice and it's interesting to see where you're at, but generally you want to push your limits as much as possible in all directions when it makes sense. So, for example, if you're snatch and clean and jerk are continually moving up and you find squatting very, very easy for you, there's no reason you can't keep pushing that squat as long as it doesn't seem to be interfering with your snatch. Because we always want to be operating with future lifts in mind. So, generally, for example, if you're trying to snatch 100 kilos, we like to see, usually in the adult lifter, we'll see somewhere between 160 to 180 kilo back squat being what most people should or can be able to do. With younger lifters, we might see a lot less. We might see 140, 150. A teenage lifter, a talented male lifter, for example, if he starts lifting when he's you know, 15, he might be able to snatch 160 with a 140, 150 squat, which is fine. But for most of you, you've probably started as an adult. So you're looking at somewhere between 160 and 180 kilos, but you're probably not going to want to stop at 100 kilo snatch. You're probably going to try and want to snatch 110 after you snatch 100 kilos. And you need something like 200 kilos after that. And then the average lifter will squat something like 210 to 220 for a 120 snatch. So you don't want to be hamstring yourself by limiting your ability now. So if you can keep pushing that squat in the right sense, in the right direction, and you should be able to push both of them at the same time for most of your training, coming up to competitions and big training blocks, it might need to take a little bit of a back burner. But for a lot of the times, for the average the intermediate lifter, you still want to be progressing those strength numbers. Now, it's difficult and it takes some smart programming, but it does benefit you hugely. And when it comes to speed and positions, having a massive deadlift and have a massive pull are huge. So we've got speed through the second pull, speed it through the contact point to the explosive phase, and then speed under. These are two of the things that help Clarence massively move these heavy weights incredibly well. And it's something that I want you to start focusing on your own training. Have a look at your pulling strength and have a look at your squatting strength and see, do they match up? Like if you're cleaning 140 kilos, are you going to fail a 180 kilo clean deadlift? And if you are, it's probably time to think about, you know what, I need to address this problem. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed Clarence's clean. I certainly enjoy watching his cleans. And let me know who you'd like to see next in this series.